No, no. You're, you're, you're short. <laughs> hey, I'm Nikhil, and uh, I'm going to talk about taxes. Yay! Woo taxes! So, in my group, we talk about taxes and how do we fix taxes in this country? Well, when it comes down to it, the federal government takes up 25% of the country's GDP. That's about three to four trillion dollars. That's a huge amount. Much of that money goes as subsidies to large companies. Money that can be better spent directing the individual. Is fixing problems such as social inequality. Furthermore, when we talked about it, we have to fix the overcomplicated tax code. The tax code is 80,000 pages long. If you're a CPA, how are you supposed to know that? It's impossible. What we need to do is simplify it so that everyone in our country can have a fair chance and make it. Everyone can live a good life, a decent life, and a way where our vote matters. After that, we talked about proportional representation. In this country, with where's past the vote voting, it doesn't matter if you're a third party. Because the way it works is that if you're a first or second party, that's all that matters. If you're the Green Party or the Socialist Party, 3% won't get you a voice. It won't. We need to fix that. We need to fix it so that everyone has a voice. So that Green Party can get capital. So that we can make a change. Thank you. Hello. My name is Desmond. Uh, I am a lay leader at Arlington Street Church in Boston. By the way, you're always welcome to come for worship and also for a social action. I mean, this is something that we in the Interfaith uh, Breakout Session talked about, is that many religious communities, while they cannot endorse a political candidate, they do get involved in social justice issues, many of the issues that Bernie is talking about, that this movement is talking about. And this is an opportunity uh, for us to reach out and find potential volunteers and definitely energize voters and to help build connections in this wider movement. Religious communities like mine, like the Quakers, United Church of Christ, the Islamic Center, there are progressive evangelical churches that address issues like Black Lives Matter, like income inequality, like fossil fuel divestment. The Unitarian Universalist Association and the United Church of Christ both voted to divest from fossil fuel. Okay? This is an opportunity to reach out to these communities, say the Bernie Sanders campaign can address various issues for you, your congregants. We can, you can have a candidates forum where representatives of different campaigns can come in and talk to your members. And these communities are not shy about having voter registration in their communities during, you know, right after worship. So let's encourage that. Let's make those connections. Learn about those traditions if you're not religious and you want to make that because that you can talk their language and relate to them and build this connection you need to make this movement work. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Aiden. Uh, I'm representing Get Out the Vote. Um, again, thank you for coming and just giving a crap because a lot of young people my age just don't. And we should give ourselves a round of applause for that. <laughs> I want to say that we had a lot of great ideas um, get out the vote. Uh, one of them was canvassing. Um, I, I know a lot of people out there are, are artistic and have a lot of gifts. Um, if you're willing to, you know, paint the canvas, like go out and do it. If you're willing to contib contribute and just use your gift to promote the cause, go for it. Um, I'm actually in high school, um, so I know, thank you. Um, a lot of uh, things that are available to me as a student is, um, um, look, I have a capability um, to create school groups, and I know that if you're also in high school, even if you're in college, um, please, uh, our, one of our ideas is to start up a school groups or clubs, for the campaign and say, hey, if you're interested in working on a grassroots campaign for a great candidate, like, just come on by, like, we'll give you the details. Swing by. Um, yeah, uh, uh, 
Another one was posting signs around the neighborhood and informing people about major issues, burning addresses. I know that that's huge for people who come from different like walks of the political life because um, finding common ground with people is huge to get this campaign started. Some people will love his, you know, uh, income inequality ideas. Some people will love his. Uh, I mean, how can you not love ideas? He's Bernie Sanders, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a big thing with young people too, even people who just have access to cell phones and the internet is spreading um, the word on social media. Um, that's really easy to do. Uh, I know you'll sometimes you'll get like some flag for it, but just be brave, go for it. Um, targeting by precinct, um, basically like the projects that we came up with were just to um, just get the number of votes that we wanted to get from each community and just say, hey, like, like vote for Bernie Sanders and just like be really positive and get it out there. But uh, um, top down versus grassroots, I don't know what that means, but uh, um, I'm assuming that has something to do with just either going door to door or um, um, you know, reaching out to your neighbor and saying, hey, like, there's a really cool candidate out there. Um, uh, just support his ideas. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I love the enthusiasm. Hello. Ooh, that is so <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian. I'm a grad student in health policy uh, at Yale, and I feel very passionately about Bernie's position on healthcare. Um, I believe that healthcare as a human right is not controversial whatsoever. It is absolutely necessary. It's a uh, healthcare is an issue right now, unfortunately, of, of parity, of social justice, and there are many existing solutions that we need to embrace. And I think Bernie is the candidate that'll make that happen. With my group, we talked about uh, several opportunities for education that exist in the near future. Among them, on October first, uh, correct me, if, don't correct me. I don't know what the name of it precisely is. But uh, there's a Medicare Day uh, hosted by, I believe, student. Someone help me out here. Student. Students for a National Health yeah. Program. Yeah, Students for a National Medicare. Health Program. Thank you. Uh, so that's October 1st. So keep your eyes open and uh, please continue to be informed about these issues, particularly about the specific nature of a single payer system, which is uh, something we should vouch for not only uh, as political people, but as people who care deeply on a human level about social justice. And if you don't feel comfortable portraying uh, the message of single payer uh, in a political way, you need You can just talk about single payer as I can be sick and you can be sick, and there's something we can do about it so that healthcare costs don't constantly rise and co quality can improve. And there are both incentives and solutions, and I think Bernie is the man for the job. Um, thank you. Hi, my name is Mickey, and I led the group on creating worker co-ops. I'm here to let you know you don't need a boss. You can get rid of the boss very easily. There's some steps to follow, and you can own your own companies. Uh, Thanks. I work with Agaric. We're a local web development company. I'd just like to tell you we're celebrating because we have added two people to our co-op. We've been able to grow. We are doing everything ourselves and we are self-sufficient. We don't need to be freelancers or um, in a queue. I have some steps here. If people want to know how to get away from their boss. I would love to give you a piece of paper that can help you get started. We have meetups in Cambridge and in Jamaica Plain once a month, and we share our ideas and our success stories, and we actually network and help you personally get your cooperative started or get you into a cooperative that is already going. There's about 12 or so cooperatives in the area. They're all wonderful. Reach out to them. They're all listed here. They'll help you personally get this done. Get your life back to your life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dave, and I came from the infrastructure group. Infrastructure is just a word that means all the common 
um, works that include roads, bridges, sewers, uh, trains all over the place, basically everything you need to move around, to have things come to you and from you in the workings of the city, the state, and the entire country. Right now our country has a D plus in terms of our infrastructure grade. It's up from a D, but it's not a good grade. And it also comes down to a very personal level. All of you who live in Boston have stories about how the T broke down while you were on it, or maybe crashed. You have uh, if you come into the city, you have stories about the commuter rail. Everyone has seen just how bad the winter was in terms of our plowing. That that's all infrastructure, and it's all things that basically come down to a very personal level. So it's grassroots involvement as well. If you're a biker, talk to your fellow bikers about. Maybe we could get our government to spend more money getting rid of potholes. And then at a national level, because we were talking about a national candidate who is going to take the White House, and we're going to put him there. <laughs> Hell yeah. And one more cheer. Ah, yeah. All right. Well, the fact about it is that at a national level, we did not spend enough money in 2008, 2009, putting people back to work. As a result, we've had the worst recession since the big one in 1929. And so we've seen more people out of work than in anybody's lifetime in America. As a result, we're still trying to get back from that. We're still seeing a lot of people out of work. And infrastructure is the way to get people back to that. We have to rebuild crumbling bridges. We have to make our internet accessible and on a first world level, comparable with that of people in, say, Estonia, who have twice the internet speed as a guarantee rate. Right? Online elections too. And online elections. And beyond that, we just need to make sure that the infrastructure is fair, that people across the country are able to get to work and able to make the economy work again at the level that people uh, are enjoying in every other country. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lisa Inkel. I'm a booster. Uh, we want party. And um, I was in the incoming inequality group. It was very interesting uh, because the majority of the group, or all the group, uh, except two of us, were Caucasian. And uh, we were talking about the gender pay gap, uh, which is much larger in the minor, you know, between minority women and men. Uh, there was a young lady who uh, was uh, a member of the Massachusetts Commission of Women or something like that. I lobbied for them uh, on Capitol Hill in 13 uh, for women's uh, uh, equal pay for women. And I actually spoke with two different legislative age aides and told them and gave them sound arguments as to why women should actually be paid more than men. <laughs> because we're great, we, hello, because you talk about added value and, you know, uh, emotional intelligence quotient and da 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 da. I think we're talking about women, okay? I'm not taking nothing from you men, but I'm just saying, and we are, you know, more uh, meticulous about what we do, you know. Uh, our, our product. Uh, but the bottom line is the national uh, uh, hourly uh, wage rate, a sheet, uh, the national hourly wage rate is uh, $22 a change an hour, and we do have a very fluid uh, uh, population in this, in this nation, uh, such that that should be the floor, not 15. 22, okay, if we know that's the national average hourly rate for an individual to sustain themselves, then that should be paying them as a floor. Yeah. And then, depending upon where they live, be it in the Northeast or in, out in the West, on the coast and so forth, very expensive there, very high cost of living there, then, and what their service or product skill sets are, they should be a court paid according to what they are contributing to that entity, that organization, that corporation. 
Uh, of course, we talked about employee-owned uh, corporations, which I'm with that. That's the new economy. Uh, Co-ops, collaboratives. Uh, but again, you know, we have to get over this. You know, if they don't look like me, um, they don't. You know, they didn't go. They didn't grow up where I grew up. Was similar. I don't really know them. You know, people are freaking people. Okay? And we all have the same needs, desires, and wants. So, stop the madness. Let's get this shit together. And build America back up to America. Thanks for a bit. Suppose you and your friends are going down to Foxwoods Casino and you're gonna have some, some good time, you're gonna drop a whole bunch of money on the tables. Maybe you're gonna win some money. You can't afford that! And the money, money you win, you get to keep. What if the money that you lost, someone else got to pay for? That's how Wall Street works right now. They're privatizing all the gains and they're socializing all the losses. Trust me, I work in a hedge fund. I know how this stuff is going. You have any idea how unstable the derivative market is? This, do you even know what derivatives are? Derivatives, I'm not talking about calculus. You know, that, it's a beautiful mathematical concept, but derivatives. They're cutting up all these little investments, bundling them up into stuff. And they're trading all these derivatives. And here's the secret, nobody really knows how much they're worth. And eventually, someone is gonna find out that they're not really worth what they've been paid for. And all that wealth that they think is floating around out there, gone. That's what happened in 2008. That's what happened in the, the dot-com boom of 2000. It happened in China just a few months ago. It happened in 1929. You think we would have learned. <laughs> and here's, here's the problem. I, I talk with people in the industry, they know. They know it's short-sighted. They know that it's gonna ruin the economy, but here's the thing. No one wants to be first. Because the person, the first person to say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play by the rules, they are going to get eaten. Because everyone else, they're not playing by the rules. And that's that's what we need. We need we need to to tie up the the banks and the and the hedge funds and all of the all the big investors. We need to we need to lay down the law and make rules and enforce those rules with the SEC. That's what we need, among other things. Hi guys, I'm Bonnie, I'm 16, and if you guys are in high school, there is a High School Students for Bernie Facebook page, please sign up. Okay, so, um, I was part of the Black Lives Matter group, and we talked about a lot of topics. So first off, education. The education system in this country is currently being shifted um, towards whitewashing and frankly disturbing um, historical inaccuracy. For example, um, when we talk in school about Martin Luther King, we talk about how he was a civil rights activist, um, but we fail to mention about how he himself discussed the March on Washington as an income inequality um, issue march as well for African Americans. Um, the Confederate flag, for instance, um, and talk about the Ku Klux Klan as being completely white from Texas history textbooks, and that's frankly disturbing. Um, and on the subject about the Confederate flag, there is a lot of bias in, bias in the um, American society towards um, um, racism and discrimination. For example, in the North, we tend to consider ourselves a bit better than our fellow um, friends down south, but in truth, it's the same sort of discrimination, just on a silent level. Um, also, on a second note, um, just to be clear, uh, Black Lives Matter Cambridge is not endorsing Bernie Sanders outright because um, not everyone in the group 
supports them. However, um, on Bernie Sanders, um, so following the Charleston shooting, Bernie talked about um, the reason why we have these sort of um, issues going on with police brutality is not just because you know, black people are corrupt, no. It's because there is a discrimination going on against these people and there is an inequality against these people and that is the reason why these sorts of events happen. Um, uh, right, and so also about, lastly, about um, Bernie's uh, history with the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Um, as we probably all know, he was um, one of the first advocates in Chicago to to make those sit-ins against segregated housing systems, and he went to Washington during the March on Washington nearly 50 years ago. And yet 50 years ago from now, we are still talking about these same issues, income inequality, racial inequality, these sorts of things, and frankly, it's disgusting. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Anthony. I'm from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Thank you. Uh, my group discussed uh, college affordability. And I personally believe I personally believe that an educated society is a judicious and peaceful society. Do you believe it as well? All right. So there's a lot of barriers to entry for people seeking college education. In the most college-dense city in America, in one of the most college-dense cities in the world, we need to promote affordable education. And Bernie's uh, Robin Hood initiative, Robin Hood tax, is what I believe is going to be the way to do it. So we talked about uh, that for those of us who have had the privilege to travel abroad to Canada, to Amsterdam, to London, to wherever, we see that there are alternatives to our system for education. We see what socialized, more socialized education can do for our populace. It's no coincidence that those nations that are most educated, perhaps England aside, are the ones that remain the most peaceful and that remain neutral in our conflicts that have mired us and drained our blood and treasure over the last 13 years. So this needs to be an initiative that goes from high schools to colleges to, to graduate schools to everywhere. We need to promote affordable education for everybody. And while Pell Grants have offered good opportunities for low-income people, and other programs have. We still need to promote programs like that today. So, that's, thank you. Hi, my name is James. I'm also a proud uh, member of a worker cooperative here in Boston. Uh, my group, we spoke about grassroots fundraising uh, for the Sanders campaign. So, since Bernie launched his campaign April 30th, he's been able to raise $15 million. And this has all come from uh, donations from the people. Uh, $400,000 alone was donated by 250,000 people. 99% of that was uh, under $125 or less. Now, the goal of Bernie Sanders' campaign is to raise between 40 to $50 million before next, Iowa, next year's Iowa's caucus. Do you think we can do it? Yeah! So do we. Now, we talked a little bit about some organizing principles around grassroots fundraising campaigns. Uh, and... Uh, Obviously, the Boston for Bernie campaign raised uh, some great funds for their uh, Vans for Bernie event that was at the uh, Middle East. That was awesome. Thank you so much for all the organizers and the hard work for that. We spoke about why is it why it's important that this campaign 
receives money from the people, not from the super PACs, not from the corporations that are fleecing our land, our people. And part of the, we want to think about staying on message and sharing that message in a positive way that we can all relate to. And with that, we, we, we can turn the hearts of people who are sitting on the fence, who no longer believe in the political system, but do believe in solution-based uh, politics. So we've got a couple great ideas. Since it's Boston, we do like to drink here. Uh, some bar fundraising ideas, uh, meetups for uh, what we call Think and Drinks. Uh, also, uh, we could we were thinking about community service challenges for burning. Donate uh, 10, 15 dollars, or uh, commit about an hour or two to uh, a community uh, group or service in, in your area. Uh, we've also thought up about having not just sending. Bernie's message out into the internet, onto the Facebooks and the Twitters, but to also inspire people to donate as well. Just sharing uh, Bernie's message along with uh, links to bostonforbernie.com to donate, as well as Bernie Sanders' um, website. So yes. Um, so yeah, so I hope everyone's excited. Uh, about fundraising at the grassroots level, about changing uh, the way that we fund our politicians and uh, and getting Bernie into the Iowa caucus with his goal and uh, doing it together. Thank you.
Yeah, screw big business, man. Yeah. All right, that's all I got. and the 15 minimum wage. Um, as we all know, Barney's awesome. And when it comes to labor issues, he's way better than Hillary Clinton. And from a labor point of view, I say hashtag Bernie or bust because I'll never vote for Hillary Clinton because she was on the board of Walmart while they were destroying the labor movement's effort to unionize those workers. So she's definitely not pro-labor. So I'm asking all of you guys, right now, how many people have a smartphone? Raise your hands. How many people on their smartphones have Twitter? All right, can you guys take out your cell phones and open up Twitter? All right, hold on, let me catch up with you guys. All right, my Twitter's loading. I have an iPhone like 4 from like 2012. All right, so you want to click the message box and you're going to send a tweet. You want to put a period in front of it first. And you want to do period at M-A-S-S-A-F-L-C-I-O. That's the Massachusetts AFL-CIO's Twitter account. So you're going to tweet to them. All I'm asking is this. Say, throw your support towards hashtag Bernie Sanders. The workers of Massachusetts want him over Hillary. Thanks. For, for anyone that doesn't know, the national AFL-CIO came out and said that unions and locals and central labor councils can't come out in support of Bernie Sanders until the national AFL-CIO endorses someone, which I find fucking ridiculous. And on top of that, the, the AF, AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, just came out in support of Hillary Clinton without asking their 1.5 million members what they think. We're all workers in this country and we all deserve dignity on the job site and dignity in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. On a side note, I'm part, I'm part of the labor, labor campaign for Bernie Sanders. We started like two months ago. There's a group of us all across the country. We have a letter going around urging union members to sign and urge to get a real campaign going to get the unions and the locals on board with Bernie. It was 2,000 signatures last week. Once the AFT came out in support of Hillary Clinton, 500 AFT members signed the letter for Bernie Sanders. During the breakout group, oh, this is like real quick, I'll end it because it's getting late. I drive back down Cape Cod. Um, during the breakout group for the labor slash $15 minimum wage, people were asking, what can labor do? The labor's all of us. We gotta talk to all the workers. All of us, like everyone, like the co-workers. When you go to McDonald's for the fast food, talk to them about a $15 minimum wage. Get, get that brand out there, just like we need to get the brand of Bernie Sanders out there. It's not about the money with Bernie, it's about our voices. We need to talk to everyone. Like, we're all organizers. We all need to be going into Walmarts, McDonald's, people shop, like, Filey's Basement. Like, talk to workers. From low-wage workers to full-time, like, Wall Street and the Federal Reserve to Bank of America workers. We need to get the brand of Bernie Sanders out there and the fight for 15 for the minimum wage. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there and for your attention. And you know, we're in this for the long haul and you're all in this for the long haul and we are gonna do this, right? And, 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 and the thing that I'm realizing is that after we get Bernie in office,
our work will have just begun. Yeah. So let's keep this going and keep connecting. My name's Marty. Uh, I was in the breakout group talking about trade deals, specifically the TPP. Now, who knows, like, raise your hand if you've heard about the TPP. Now, keep your hand up if you can explain in one sentence what the TPP is. Keep, keep your hand up if you think the TPP is one of the most interesting and sexy topics, yeah. So, we have some work to do, and um, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, we, we read a, 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 a write-up that Bernie Sanders has on his Senate website that explains the TPP more eloquently than I ever could, and we read that as a group, and then we talked about what we need to do to stop the TPP and to get Bernie in office. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is an is, 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 is international treaty that will set up an extrajudicial system that will elevate corporations to the level of nation states and allow them to sue member nations for making any regulations that might hurt their expected future profits. Okay, this is predatory capitalism taken to the next level and we need to stop it. We still can stop it. The TPP has not been approved yet. Fast Track Authority has been approved. So in a number of weeks or months, President Obama is going to come to Congress with a finalized trade deal and we will have 90 days to review the text and then to urge Congress to vote yes or no. And I hope you will all be part of the movement to get Congress to vote no. So our group has decided as an individual action and I hope you will all invite us to learn about what the TPP is, go to exposethetpp.org, go to flushthetpp.org, watch the videos, share them, understand how this impacts you, and then help 10 people that are close to you understand what the TPP is and how it impacts them so that when we have that 90 days, we have a movement that can shut down the TPP and get Bernie in office. Thank you. Hey y'all, I'm Lyra, and I'm gonna keep this real short. Um, I'm from the immigration group, and we were basically talking about how Bernie has done some really great legislation about keeping our borders open, but also providing some rights to undocumented immigrants, but the fight is not over. The fact of the matter is the fa that the, the way we don't protect our undocumented immigrants affects all of us. It allows the corporations to make sure that our wages are kept low because they can find cheaper labor. So we have to be able to um, campaign for really mean meaningful immigration reform in the future. And that's where the fight is right now. And we need to protect the most vulnerable people and the people who do not have access to political, um, to political circles in the same way that we do. Thank you. Okay, we're coming to a close. Quick announcement. You can follow this event if you go to Instagram at Boston for Bernie. That's Boston, the number four Bernie. Finally, we're going to close things up with someone very near and dear to us. Socialist Alternative has given us a ton of help organizing this event. And here we have Edmund. He's a Socialist Alternative. He's a longtime organizer. Let's hear from him. Take away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Eric, the MC. My brother also. First, I'm proud to call my brother. Good evening, Boston. Are you ready to work for an alternative to the big money, big business politics we have today? Yes. Are you ready to organize a new kind of politics? Yes. Are you ready to join a new political revolution in America? Massive applause goes here. is a city that is revolution in its heart. Yeah! Yeah, baby! Yeah. You can see the monument rises over Bunker Hill. I pass it on the train every day. You can still taste the tea in Boston Harbor. At least I hope that's tea. <laughs> see, this is a city that worked for years to clean up our act and to save the Charles River. We're up against a political establishment in this country that's lowering the standards for drinking water. We people, we care so much about the environment that earlier today, it was on the news as I was coming down here, uh, a great white shark washed up, got stranded on the beach down in Chatham, and instead of you know running from the great white shark, people organized to save it, get it swimming back in the water. That is how much we care about the environment. We're up against the political establishment 
They don't, that doesn't care whether our planet or the people or animals on it stay healthy and alive so long as the billionaires on it get even richer. This is a state where if you work a 40 hour week on minimum wage, you still have trouble even making rent. We're up against a political establishment that's happy to go out for $150 lobster dinners with their big business friends and who don't care that the waitress who brings the meal is only making three bucks an hour. Yes, that's the wage for tip workers in this state. Three dollars an hour. This is a country where if you're a young black man, you are seven times more likely to be sent to prison and 21 times more likely to be killed by police than if you're a young white man. We are up against a political establishment that mumbles about equality, but if you press the politicians, 90% of them cannot even bring themselves to say the three simple words, black lives matter. Everyone is fed up with the political establishment and the way they operate. That's why Congress's approval ratings have been in single digits for years. We're here because this is a rally for Bernie Sanders, who puts himself out there as a different kind of politician. And unlike his opponents in both the Republicans and Democrats, Bernie Sanders is not a millionaire. Unlike almost every other politician in America today, Bernie Sanders has won every election he's ever won, not with the help of the entrenched party machines, but independent of the big parties and their big money. But something Bernie Sanders says loud and clear is, this election is not just about Bernie Sanders. We're all here to build something that hasn't been seen in American politics for a hundred years. We're here to build a mass movement against the billionaire class. We're here to build a movement who can make this country prosper again and we're not just going to talk, we are going to organize and we are going to fight. And I'll tell you what else we're going to do. We're not going to just break up and go home when the election is over. We're going to build a movement that says that politics isn't about what candidate has the better haircut or who's more polished for the TV cameras. We say that politics is about making the lives of all of us better every day, whether that's through campaigns and voting, whether it's through solidarity with activists and protesters, whether that's organizing working people. And that's why I'm so proud to have representatives of the trade union movement here with us today. The power of organized labor won all of us the five-day, 40-hour work week, and labor is going to be central to winning that back and winning a wage we can live on. Labor is organizing in this country today to make sure teachers in our schools are allowed to teach instead of just administer standardized tests day after day. Labor mobilized just a couple of weeks ago in a heroic effort to stop the toxic TPP and TTIP trade deals, which threatened to undermine our rights to public services, our rights to a fair wage, our right to say that corporations are corporations and people are people, and that people have rights and corporations do not. Labor is going to be central to the movement that we're trying to build, and what kind of movement is it? Well, I'll tell you, Bernie Sanders calls himself a socialist. When I was a kid, that was a dirty word, but I'll say, I'm proud to call myself a socialist and a member of the socialist alternative, too. I think a lot of people in this country, when they learn that socialism means creating good, green jobs to end our dependence on fossil fuels. When they look, I'm talking about the environment, I'm dropping bits of paper on the ground. When they learn that socialism means not being handed a lifetime of debt and underemployment as a reward for getting a college degree. When Americans learn that socialism means not having to be afraid of going bankrupt. If you or a member of your family has a medical emergency, I think a lot of Americans will be proud to call themselves socialists too. We're going to build a movement like America hasn't seen in a hundred years, a decade, in decades where instead of fighting against each other, where the 99% comes together and says we will work for each other and we'll make the whole country better off. Now I do have one piece of bad news. And that bad news is that this campaigning doesn't come for free. 
We are up against big business politics and we are up against big money politics. And in a world dominated by big money, we need you to open your wallets and donate to Boston for Bernie Sanders so we can build this campaign and next time so we can rally 5,000 people here in Boston for a new kind of politics based in all of us ordinary folks from big cities and small towns. The people who are working hard not just in stores and factories and offices, but working hard at home to raise a family. 58% of the country, according to the polls, says they're fed up with the established parties and want something new. I say we can give it to them. So as today's rally starts to come to a close, here's what I want you to do. First, if you haven't yet, make sure you've signed up on one of our clipboards so you can stay in touch with Boston for Bernie. It will help link you with local uh, campaigners in your town or neighborhood. Second, I want you to keep an ear out for independent, progressive candidates in your area. Whether they're for Congress, or State House, or City Council. Up in Seattle and Washington State, they've got just one independent Socialist City Councilor. Just one. But that one Councilor and the movement behind her, they've already won a $15 minimum wage in that city, and they're expanding the fight to affordable rents. We can build big for working people here in Massachusetts, but we need a united movement. And lastly, I want you all to think about the better world that we're trying to make here, because that's really what we're doing here. The establishment, the media, they love to pretend politics is a horse race. If your horse doesn't win, try again in four years. But politics has a real impact on people's lives. <laughs> Massachusetts was the first state to recognize same-sex marriage, and that's not enough. That's not the end of liberation, but that's important, not because it was some race we were trying to win, but because it means we made that first step, and a lot of people stepped outside their comfort zones to do it, in order to make this country more fair and more equal. And when I see people holding up signs that say, we need single-payer health care, or we need $15 an hour now, I think we can lead this country in winning those fights too. I know that the spirit of the American working people is still alive and it's burning bright. And I know that together, we can build a world where everyone is free. Free from poverty. Free from hatred. Free from war. Free from want. A world where we are all free to live our lives to the fullest. We are taking this first step to build that world here tonight. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. We're coming to a close. Just have a couple of quick, boring announcements. Okay, now you can obviously follow us on all kinds of social media. We have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. But more importantly, you looked around you tonight, a lot of you wrote your town or your name tag. Meet up with someone from where you are. Because in two weeks, we're going to have a national organizing day. Apart from that, uh, volunteers, please return your clipboards. Everyone, please take your trash with you. Apart from that, we'll see you at the next Bernie event. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.